Hi, everyone. I'm Dr. Berkey in the political science program, and I'm excited to share my current research with the university community, and especially to colleagues in the College of Health Professions and Human Services and students in our public health program, because my current research concerns the politics of public health. As a society, we have come through a COVID-19 pandemic that not only exposed inequities in the realm of public health and resulted in diminished trust in public health institutions, but also thrust the question of the contours of the public into political discourse. My work grapples with this dilemma by examining the ways in which the Black Freedom Movement cared for the public in creating the conditions for multiracial democracy. It is worth turning to the civil rights movement to think through the dilemmas of public health because that movement resulted in the most thoroughgoing transformation of the public sphere in American life. One of the key arguments made by critics of public health is that public health compromises freedom. My work responds to this criticism by recovering the ethic of willful suffering at the core of nonviolent resistance tactics deployed by civil rights activists. To accomplish this, I turn to the pioneering work of Bayard Rustin. You may be familiar with that name from the recent film released about Rustin on Netflix. Looking back on the civil rights era, Rustin wrote, you cannot take a stand for truth or justice without automatically involving other people and causing some suffering. The word suffering and invocations to suffering percolate from Rustin's pen. How could suffering, something we normally wish to avoid, be a civic value? For Rustin, the answer is that citizenship demands more than tending to the normal business of life. Nonviolent action must disrupt normalcy. It demands what Rustin called the performance of little actions that share in each other's suffering for the purpose of generating new public consciousness. The upshot is that Rustin gestures toward a framework for public health that is not limited to experts or elite institutions alone, but a public health practice that is participatory, that invites the agency of everyday citizens, and that generates a more equitable public rather than merely administering to the already existing public. I look forward to sharing this research when it is published, and I'm excited to hear what everyone else is working on.